I just posted a video on my YouTube channel that got way more traction than anything I've posted. And it, it, it's this concept of, I hate being like the SEO is dead guy. And, and I, I'm more motivated than anybody to sell SEO stuff because I have an SEO agency. And I also have the Blueprint Training, which is focused on working with SEO agencies. And, and what I tell people is that, look, as long as people are using a platform, it's not dead. Like email, right? Like email marketing is not dead. It's just completely changed. And the attention has gone from 50% open rates back in the day to if you're at 15% on a big list, you're in a pretty good place, right? It doesn't say that email is dead, but our strategies have to change. It's the same thing with SEO, especially if you're an SEO vendor or an agency. If you're still trying to sell SEO the same way that you've been selling it in the past, assuming that it's a good fit for every business, it's just not. Like if I'm a B2B SaaS company, I'm putting $0 in SEO. It's a complete waste of resources as opposed to putting it into other organic strategies like content and supporting that with paid. However, my wife does have, uh, she does Airbnb short-term rental management as a company. That in itself is still a great place for search because there's very few other avenues to get clients because you can't really dial in an ICP. If, in a nutshell, if you can't dial in on a core ICP, then search is still good because it's really hard to do content creation because you need an avatar. It's really hard to do outbound because you need a specific ICP to do outbound for. And search is kind of a, a catch-all for people that are putting themselves in market saying, I need a property manager right now in this location, right? So we're doing some paid search and some SEO stuff for them and it works really well. But of course there's a ceiling on that and you have to figure out other channels, otherwise you only scale to a certain point. When I coach and work with agencies, I tell them all the time, I like hook them in by telling them that, yo, if you're continuing to run and sell your SEO agency the way that you've been doing it for the past five, 10 years, you have a very limited runway left. You got maybe one or two years left on that until the market starts to get smarter and being like, hey, I'm getting traffic, but I'm not getting any customers. The core of what we do here as marketers is to make people money or some form or facet that leads to getting more customers and making more money. And if you're not able to prove that, or at least be a attributable source to that, which is what's happening with SEO is like, you can still get a ton of traffic, but but if you want to rank for top funnel searches that have nothing to do with the brand or are purely informational or people can get that from a knowledge graph in Google, you're making it very hard for yourself to continue to build your business. And that's why the Blueprint Train does so well, because we're focused on refocusing the offer on industries, on niches, on verticals, on ICPs, where SEO still makes the money, right? My agency, for example, focuses on attorneys because I've been through the gambit with attorneys trying to help them do podcasts and video marketing. They're just too busy, right? And these guys are all guys and gals, I should say, are all taking sales calls themselves. They can't really hire a salesperson because they have to have that kind of legal consultation with them. So they're so busy and their big thing is that I don't want a lot of traffic. I don't want a lot of leads. I just want the right leads because if I get two or three cases, I'm good for the next for the next couple of years. Right. So understanding again who that ICP is, what they want, and then backing that into the proper marketing mix and marketing strategy is really kind of the core foundation of, of, of what a lot of my thesis is when working with agencies now, which is you have to be focused on a single type of customer, especially if you're an agency doing less than you know, one to 3 million per year. You got to focus in on one vertical, on one niche, on one ICP, if you will, and then focus completely on what it is that is going to make them the money the fastest. And then that is what your service and offer should be. And if search is a part of that, great, but we can't be romantic about just forcing search on people anymore, because again, you're just setting yourself up for these conversations where the client is upset. The client isn't happy. The client is bothering you, which is dragging down your team. It just becomes a nightmare of a business to run. That's why so many agencies get stuck in this, this business where they're like, I'm working nonstop and I feel like I can't get ahead. And it's like, yeah, because you're not selling the right thing. You're not putting yourself in the right position to succeed. Um, no, well, I think it, when you said, you know, SEO for SEO's sake, you know, is, is kind of what everybody is doing for the most part, or or even content, because I think with content, everybody's told like, hey, do content, make videos, do this. And there's a disconnect between, you know, the action of, of making stuff and how the heck it's going to lead to a sale. And what will happen is they'll, they'll get clients and maybe the client will be impressed, like, oh, you made all this content, like, I feel great about the process. But then when you try to justify the, all the work and the money that was spent, there's just nothing there because it was a disconnect between the action and the, the results. But it sounds like you you have that figured out. You called it the blueprint? Yeah, the blueprint training, we, we focus on working primarily with SEO agencies. Our actually core kind of ICP is all about, uh, I'm sorry, not ICP, our core kind of thesis is all about service productization especially in the SEO space, because man, I mean, SEO agencies just try and they, they try and do everything for everyone, all this custom work, and it doesn't make customers more money. Like nobody really needs a competitive analysis. I'm sorry. It doesn't make, it doesn't <laughs> really move the needle on anything, right? It's, it's good if the client asks for it, if they want it, or if they're trying to solve a specific problem around it, but like could, putting that into your, into your core deliverables and like sending them stuff that they don't want, it's not the right move. So 
the thing with productization though is that you cannot productize your service if you're not focused on one vertical right the whole thesis with productization is that you're doing the same thing over and over again for the same type of client and you're focused on solving a specific problem for a specific avatar right and when you can do that too then you can create leverage in terms of pricing right being able to when you're solving a problem again especially it's a painful problem and that problem is tied to lack of customers to lack of whatever you can then anchor your cost, your pricing against the expected result or against your past results, right? And that's another reason why SEO agencies get stuck is because they're not making companies more money. So they, they're they charging based on hours and based on output. And so they're constantly throwing more stuff on to be like, oh, let me do more and more stuff to justify these hours when it's like me now as a business owner who works with vendors, I get it. I'm like, I don't really want to talk to you. I don't really want to have a weekly call with you to talk about my keyword rankings. Just show me the data that I need to know to make to show me that what I'm paying you justifies is justified. And again, if SEO is so many SEOs are just so romantic about the channel. I mean, we've been doing it for so long. You don't really realize how big the SEO industry is until you're selling to this industry for, you know, five years now at the blueprint training and you realize it's a big big industry and people are very passionate about it and it's great because it creates a lot of conversation which makes marketing in this space very great as i'm sure as you all know at digital marketer agencies are very passionate and they're very vocal and they love discourse which is great you know for for marketing but they're also very stubborn and resistant to change because there's a lot of fear rooted in changing your business and especially your core model and kind of pivoting off of seo people are seos by nature instead of problem solvers by nature, consultants by nature, and focus on what's best for the client, not what's best for you and what you want to do. It's not about us. It's about them. Like, how can I help them? How can I help them sleep better at night? How can I help them get more customers? How can I can do all these things. That's what we should be focused on our services about. And again, that's how you build into this, this leverage with pricing to be constantly going up market and charging more without having to do more. You can charge more by doing less. It's not like just a, a, a hook and an ad that I run. It's not overly difficult, but it comes down to understanding that ICP and what they really care about, right? Like with attorneys, like I said, we could throw a bunch of stuff at them, but if I don't really know who they are and what they want, then I'm just wasting time. And I'm also literally kind of drive my business into the ground. But by stripping things down and productizing your service, you're able to focus on the core process that drives results. It also creates a standard, right? For the top tier of what you could and should be doing every single time. Because when you're doing custom work, which I don't have a problem with per se, if the client's paying you the right amount of money for it, but if you're every client that comes in, you have to reinvent the wheel and figure something out. It's a nightmare of a business to run. It is not a fun, an agency is not a fun business to run if you're doing that. But when you've got a process, when you've got systems, when it's scalable, predictable, repeatable, you can really remove yourself from that. And you can finally get to that position where you're focused on running the entire business and seeing the whole field, right? As opposed to just hyper-focused on tactics and keyword rankings and links and all that different stuff that you just get bogged down in. And when you finally pull yourself out, you realize those things don't matter because the client doesn't care about them, right? So Well, it's not going to get you more business. And even if you could get new business, if it's so custom, you don't really have a business. You have a consultancy. Exactly. You have like, okay, here, let's look at your individual business and we'll go through this, but you can't clone yourself. And so there's no, you can't scale that at all. On top of the fact that you will just be working harder and harder and harder. And unless you, you know, it's just you and you enjoy that process. Yeah, uh, that's the other side that's, of the coin, right? Yeah. If, that, if that's who you are, if you don't want to be a people manager, you can still build a highly successful consultancy by doing custom work, but you've just got to be, you got to be really, really good and really knowledgeable, right? And that's kind of the beautiful thing about productization is that you can just focus on one thing and you don't have to, <clears throat> you know, when I do consulting, uh, brain consulting, it, it is, it is a pretty big scope and a pretty big task. And I do have to be pretty well involved in it because I'm the one again, who's been doing this for 15 years and has pretty much seen everything that there is when it comes to especially B2B marketing, but you're right. It doesn't scale. But what I do is I just keep raising my prices, keep raising my prices, keep raising my prices, keep raising my prices, keep prices until people just get priced out or, um, you know, it's no longer worth it for me to work with them. But I agree. I, I do that to put cash in my pocket so I can go invest in real estate. I don't do that as my primary core business because it's not something you burn out on it.